Hello, my friends. I hope everyone is doing well. Well, here we got Sarah going again. Today is July 25th, and there was a hearing. And I can already tell before playing this, it's not very long. I think it's about, I don't know, 18 to 20 minutes, something like that. That Sarah looks pissed. But I'm sitting there thinking... Well, this is just my first, this is just my first take, okay? I'm just saying, okay, you're being included. Why do you look pissed? But I'm thinking, well, she's probably pissed because, you know, of the unfairness that, that's been doled out to her and the fact that she's going to be her own attorney. But anyhow, let's see what it's about. I don't know. I tell you what, I don't know. She, in some ways, she might be worse than Daryl. I don't know. Because she's, she's good. You can just already look at her. And I, I got to say, time has not treated her well. I mean, I'm not, but I'm older than her, so I can say that. But I mean, like, you know, she's in her 40s, but, you know, people, but yeah, she time has not treated her well. Let's just put it that way. But maybe mean is, um, mean doesn't serve well on you either. So let's see. What's going on? I'm sure it's going to be interesting. And I'm sorry, you might need ear earbuds or something. This is the best I can do with the volume. Just want to say that. But did you see that big sigh? She's just like, ugh, like she's so put out. Again, you might need earbuds, but I have it up the sound up as loud as I can. This is a story on behalf of Dave Cacciatore on behalf of the state. Ms. Boone, good morning. Can you please raise your right hand so Madam Clerk can swear you in? Yes. Ma'am, good morning. Can you state your name and date of birth for the record for me? Sarah Boone, 101077. Um, we also have a representative from Prison Break Investigation. Sir, if you could come forward, please. If you could, sir, raise your right hand. Madam Clerk is going to go ahead and swear you in. All right, sir, good morning. Could you state your name for the record? Billy Lane. And Mr. Lane, what's your affiliation with Prison Break Investigations? I'm the owner and chief investigator. Oh, okay, very good. Uh, the reason the court had this hearing this morning is the court has found that Ms. Boone has forfeited her right to counsel uh, and waived her right to counsel alternatively by virtue of her conduct in this case. As such, Ms. Boone is currently representing herself. Um, the court has been working diligently to provide you the discovery. I received your letter, ma'am, and I have reviewed it. We have not forgotten about you. It's just taken some time in order to coordinate the appropriate processes with the jail. In conversations with the jail, a laptop has been secured and will be issued to you after USB drives are provided with all the discovery. Upon the jail's receipt of those items, the following provisions will be adhered to. The laptop, charging cable, and USB devices will be kept in the FDC main control room when not in use. At no time will the charging cord be placed in the housing unit. Upon the return of the laptop to the FDC main control, the laptop will be placed on the charging cable to ensure it is available for the next day's usage. The laptop and USB device is to be accounted for with the control room inventory. The control room DST or CO will make logbook entries for the issuing and returning the USB device and laptop. The dorm officer will make logbook entries for the receiving and returning of these items to the applicable movement officer. A notebook entry will be completed in IMS for every issuance of the laptop and USB device to inmate Boone. The laptop and USB device will be available daily to you, Ms. Boone, between 0800 and 1600 hours. A notebook entry will be completed in IMS for every issuance of the laptop and USB device to yourself, Ms. Boone. Um, the discovery was provided at the court previously and is in the two banker's boxes that are in front of the court to your left, Mr. Um, Lane. I'm going to order your, you, sir, to take possession and custody of that discovery that was provided to the court previously on June 28, 2024. 
you, through prison break investigations, shall copy all of the discovery onto as many USB jump drives as necessary. The Judicial Administration Commission for the State of Florida shall be responsible for the fees and costs due to prison break investigations for copying all of the discovery onto as many USB jump drives as necessary. <clears throat> you will appear uh, with a hear uh, for a hearing with the court on August 1st, 2024 at 845 in courtroom 12A of the Orange County Courthouse with the discovery and all USB jump drives containing the discovery. A representative from the Orange County Jail shall also appear for that hearing as well. At that point in time, prison break investigation yeah. shall hand deliver all USB jump drives containing the discovery to the representative from the Orange County Jail in order to be placed onto the laptop that is currently secured and to be issued to the defendant for all trial and court preparation. Do you have any questions for me, sir? I have a conflict for August 1st, Your Honor. I'm okay. out of state. Tuesday, Friday, next week, which I believe is the conference August 1st. Uh, for my son's wedding. Okay, well, congratulations. We can, when do you return from your son's wedding, sir? Uh, I will be back uh, late Friday evening, so I'll be available the following week. Okay, um, will you be able to complete that task by that time? Yes, sir, I'll do my best. Okay, sir, we will see you on Monday, on, um, give me a second, I want to make sure get the date right. Monday, August 5 at uh, 845. Okay, you'll be given a copy of the order that I just read from. Ms. Boone, you'll also be copy, given a copy of the order. Do you have any questions for me? Hmm. I am thoroughly confused. I Was the notice ever put online for this or mailed to anyone? Okay. I don't even know why Mr. Lane is here. I don't know why I'm here. Well, ma'am, you are now representing yourself. And previously, you had requested to be uh, appear at every hearing that was held. As you are now representing yourself, the court cannot have any hearings regarding your case without you being here. I put on the record and explained to you the process that the court has had with communications with the jail. I'm not allowed to look at any of that. I'm not allowed to copy any of that. So in speaking with the jail and understanding that you still have a private investigator that was provided to you through the state that's being compensated by the state, you're still allowed to utilize his services. The protections of the attorney-client privilege are still applicable to him. So he's able to review any of these documents, ensure that they are safely copied without violating any terms of the privileges. Those will then be placed on multiple USB drives and provided to you. Those USB drives will then be uploaded to a computer that has been secured for you at the jail for you to access all of that information. She looks so put out. Okay. My question is, was a notice of hearing posted or mailed to anyone to where apparently the news crews obviously got it? How is it that I do not know anything about this other than my bunk being kicked at 3 o'clock in the morning telling me I have court? Ma'am, I have no other way to get in touch with you <gasps> other than setting the hearing, which was set yesterday once I received confirmation from the jail as to the processes for how this would work. And I understand that your case is important, and I want to move it as efficiently, as diligently as possible. I know that you've been waiting for this information, and it took some time to confirm the process with the jail. You've advised me that you have very limited space, you have almost no privacy, you have a small drawer where you can keep some personal effects. We could not send all of those boxes with you to the jail, and the jail advised oh, okay. me that they cannot take all those boxes. A process had to be created to make sure. Sorry about that, I'm sorry. This please. is the process. There we go. The process that I was explained after speaking to a couple of sergeants and uh, I've been waiting for that, and I would much rather prefer a hard copy of these to where I can write on them <laughs> as opposed to wow. anything that's on a laptop. I am unable to provide that for you. I have been provided the, the uh, process has been provided to me by the Orange County Jail. I, I understand that's your preference, but I can't do anything more than what I've done right now. I understand. And I have had other information given to me, which is why I've been waiting for the boxes for them. So I don't know, is this something that I need to pursue continuously still for me to be able to receive my hard copies? Because no one tells me anything. I can't answer, I cannot answer that question because that may call for me providing you legal advice, which I am prohibited from doing. Ah, right. Remember that? Now, because once... If y'all watch that hearing 
where Daryl wanted to represent himself, he was informed that, you know, now that that's what's happening, the judge cannot provide any legal advice to him. And this is what's happening with Sarah. Now, I will say, if y'all watch, um, I usually send y'all over there a lot of times for, like, legal stuff. Lawyer, lawyer you know, Peter, um, he's really good about explaining things. And he was, if you haven't checked him out, check him out. Because after um, the court sent her that letter that now that she would be representing her, herself, Peter had said that he probably would have, because due to how she is, he said the judge didn't do anything wrong in his opinion, but because it's her and she's unique, I don't know, unique is maybe too kind of word to use for, but that he maybe should have said something like, okay, you know, like be very specific and say, okay, this is going to be it. You know, this is going to be, you know, you're not going to have any more attorneys. And I just wonder if maybe one of the things they should have said to explain to her is that I cannot give you legal advice or maybe they will handle that at a different time. I don't know if I made any sense, but that's my thoughts because she's somebody who needs a lot. But, you know, legally, he probably can't do it. But let's let's listen some more. So am I supposed yeah. to go back and speak to the captain and whoever else it is that I might need to speak to in order to receive these? Again, I cannot answer that question. All I can tell you is that we will have a hearing on August 5, <laughs> whereby which uh, prison break investigations will provide all of the information on USB drives. Those will be provided to a representative from the Orange County Jail who will place all that information on a laptop for you to use, and that's accessible for your use from 0800 to 1600 every day. So, I guess I will figure that out because if I'm up at 2 o'clock in the morning, I can't utilize the laptop, which is why another reason why I was looking forward to the hard copies. So, my other question is, is my time prorated for the time that I've been waiting for my discovery? I, I'm not sure I understand what that means. Will I be having additional time added or will it be extended from the time period of me waiting for my discovery still? I'm not in a position to answer that question. I don't know what, I don't know what it is that you're asking for. My pretrial is supposedly set for September 24th, I believe it is. So obviously I will not be prepared, be prepared, and obviously I do not know what I'm doing, and obviously I'm still waiting for my discovery. So for that time period that I have been waiting for almost four weeks now, will that be added to the time frame in order for me to be properly prepared? As of right now, the dates are what the dates are, ma'am. Okay, so I just miss a week, I'm, a month. The dates are what the dates are. So I also sent you, I believe, five motions. Have you received those? No, ma'am, I have not. The only oh, last week. Then I have not received them yet. The last correspondence I got from you, ma'am, was received on July 8th. Okay. Five motions I've mailed. They're probably sitting wherever else it is, considering it takes a day for you all to receive my mail, considering I'm right down the street from you all. So I have those also in order, which may change whatever information or Anything that I'm trying to acquire in between now, the month less that I have in order to prepare for my trial, that's in October. So if you could keep an eye out for those also. Um, I don't know how, who I'm supposed to ask. How did Mr. Lane come into any of this? Like, how was he called? Mr. Lane has been your um, investigator in this case, and he was advised to attend this morning's hearing by virtue of being provided the discovery in order to digitize it so that you can have access to it. The court contacted him? I did not contact him. I'm, am I allowed to speak to him directly? You can. Um, Mr. Lane, who contacted you in order for you to be here, please? The contacted If I'm pro se and my own attorney, shouldn't I be included in all of this so I know what's going on and not a surprise <laughs> Like for the second time? Ma'am, again, this is why there were benefits to being represented by counsel. Ooh. The court has already identified in its 16th page order the reasons for why you no longer have those benefits. Right. Which it makes things more. exceptionally more difficult, as I explained to you in communicating with the court 
and communicating with the state attorney's office. Isn't that what a certificate of service is for anything that's filed by anybody in the court? There, there that was, should be included in that. Ma'am, there was no certificate of service for setting this for today. This was coordinated by the JA. You were advised as soon as it was set. It was set yesterday. It's just very odd to me that the news knew about it before I did. Again, I can't speak to that. And so nonetheless, my constitutional right to counsel was being forfeited on your behalf in the court. So now I don't get appropriate notice in preparation for me to be able to be here and doing what I'm supposed to be doing and act as and perform as? I've already addressed the reasons, ma'am, for why there was a forfeiture and alternatively a waiver in the 16-page order that you were provided. Again, it's difficult to communicate with you based on where your current housing is. I'm not able to pick up the phone. The court, the judicial assistant's not able to pick up the phone to communicate with you or send you an email to schedule certain things. And it loves a little bit of a level of further complication. How is the news knows before my, I do? Uh, you keep oh asking gosh. the same question and the answer is going to be the same. I cannot answer that question for you because I do not know. Okay. But you do know it's harder for me. I, I would agree with that, yes. And you do know that you did not ask me any questions in regards to your order. You just read it straight off and never asked me what's what or how many, if anything, of it. Ma'am, there's. if you have questions, I can certainly try to answer them. I'm trying to facilitate you getting that information that you're certainly entitled to, and it took time for a process to be created by the Orange County Jail, as they had advised me. They do not have a place to store two banker's boxes of information, nor are they in a position to provide you physical copies. This is what I've been advised is the process is. As soon as that process was finalized, I set the hearing. This was finalized yesterday. No one ever asks me. I've been waiting for the boxes. Um, I really don't know what to say, and because I supposedly have no way to contact you other than a letter, and the same for you, I don't know how the news crews got here before I did. You know, to let go of that news. But I don't know going forward how is it that I'm supposed to be able to communicate with you other than me sitting here in front of you at these I guess suppose it's surprise hearings that I'm going to have every single time that it is that you would like to speak to me. Is that what it's going to be? Ma'am, I cannot answer that question. All I can tell you is that you, you can communicate with the court through the avenues that you've been utilizing previously by and through letter writing. As I said, I do not have your letters that you sent last week. They're not in the court file and they were not in my inbox yesterday. So as soon as I receive them, I will diligently review them. And mm -hmm. if we have to set a hearing, you'll be properly noticed for it. In the certificate of service. You'll be properly noticed for it, yes, ma'am. And will there be a proper notice for today? Notice was performed last night. I've Can already I explained. Can the news crews how they got here? No, ma'am, I'm not going to let you do that. <laughs> oh, my not God. They're not a party to this action right now. It's, it's wrong and it's unfair. You, sir. Oh, hang on. You're really entitled to that opinion. Um, am I allowed to ask him a question? Sure, go ahead. Um, Mr. Lane, how is it that you and I are supposed to be speaking to one another? Okay, I got to stop. Mr. Lane is probably like, for the love of everything that's holy. This is crazy. You see, I got to say for a minute. And then, like, that's, I'm sure that's, that's the prosecutor, like me pointing on the screen there, Mr. Cacciatore. I just wonder, like, think about, oh, my gosh, all the evidence. I mean, she provided her own evidence. But don't you all find it interesting that all she's talked about is to be included, be included, be included. But then she got a little ticked off because she... She got pushed out of her bunk or whatever she said at three this morning to be here. And yet, what it the judge is doing is doing, well, now what he has to do since she's going to be defending herself and including her like she asked for. I just think that is so nuts. And she is, you can just see it that way she's, but you know, she does look like a scary little as I said before, you know, she's like a kind of, she's like a rabid chihuahua. She's like a rabid chihuahua. And I love, 
chihuahuas, although they are controversial and they do pee and all that, but mine was a chihuahua mix and they are pretty cute. So, but I'm saying a rabid one. She's just like, blah, 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 blah. And she's so concerned about the news. But I think at the same time, she loves it. But let me continue on. I just had to say that. But I'm just thinking about that man going there. Oh, my God. The investigator going, well, hopefully I won't have to see you much. So my suggestion would be, since you're now the attorney for a pro se, that either you or your honor gives me access to the jail to come visit with you. And I'll be happy to do that. It is the, the policy of the Orange County Jail to have a letter I don't know that I'm in a position to compel the Orange County Jail to do anything. But you are the ones who contacted him. But I can't tell the jail, let this person come talk to you. If they have a policy where you need to provide the letter, then you need to provide the letter. So until you have that letter, you and I will not be able to speak with one another? I will contact you. Ma'am, do you have any other questions? I don't think you have enough time. I'm just doing my best, and if you could please keep an eye out for my motions. I will be on the lookout for them. You said there were five, correct? Yes. All right. I will be on. Could please include me on the certificate of service for whatever hearings that we have that are no longer a surprise for me, please. Understood. You'll be given a copy of the court's order that I read momentarily, uh, and I will see you both on August 5 at 845 in the morning. All right. Thank you all very much. Mr. Cacciatore, anything further, sir? Nothing from the state. All right, thank you very much. Yeah, Mr. Cacciatore, I mean, Mr. Cacciatore, the prosecutor just sitting up on the screen, sitting up there on that screen, you know, via Zoom or whatever, thinking, nope, I'm just waiting to get this circus over with. I've been waiting and waiting like Sarah. But I think there's just a little bit left where you all will get to really see some of her body language. But, you know, that's the thing. I mean, I guess she'll have, like, the ICF forms. See, this is where Daryl would be very helpful to her. He could explain to her about the ICF forms, about what I call the idiot complaint forms. Because if you remember, those of you who watched the Daryl trial, that, you know, the, the judge, because she just thinks that he's, like, connected to the jail, but it doesn't work that way because, if you remember, Judge Daryl even had that um, that lady come in and testify that they they the jail has their own set of rules and even the judge has to go by them because they operate a certain way. And so, but Sarah just thinks that, you know, well, she just thinks everything sh should just be handed to her. I will say, I'm just trying to keep an open mind. I mean, I can't really with her. I know that if I were her, I would like to have the hard copies myself too because I to have them in your hand and to write on them I get it but apparently it looks like compared to Daryl she doesn't have the space because if you remember with him he was able he had a a tablet a laptop or whatever and he was actually able to go into a separate room to do his stuff and apparent well and he had enough space in his jail cell to have his boxes, you know, he got to have his boxes there with him, which I get. I will say, I'm not saying, I'm not saying excuses anything. Of course, she wouldn't have to go through that if she, you know, not run off all the attorneys. But I would want those things, too, to be able to dig through and write on. But, you know, she'll figure it out. I mean, if she has a tablet, she can still get her paper that obviously she's able to write everything on and, and still make notes of stuff. But she's just, I'm, I have to give the ju judge props for remaining 
calm. You know, at some point, probably he's going to have to say, okay, back off, bitch. Well, he can't say that, but I can. Thank you, sir. Have a great day. Oh, wait, before you leave, <clears throat> that is all going to be yours. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, yes, I would, sir, so that you can begin the digitization process. All right, I'll see you on the 5th. Do you see how she was trying to, like, stop? Because she wanted to talk more. And the the guard or whomever she is escorting her out is, like, trying to steer her the other way. Because remember in that letter she was saying something about her trying to, to speak and them holding on, pulling her uniform so she couldn't. <laughs> Gosh. Perfect. Thank you, sir. Look, look up. Oh my God, she's such a pain in the ass. Do you see that look? That's scary. Hmm. Poor George. And again, you know, not a word about how sorry she is about George. Excuse me, because she's not sorry because she's the victim and it's all about her. But here we go. So that's how that ended. So I guess now the judge and us need to look out for her, what is it, a five page motion or something she's gonna send. It does take some time to get there. She's just, she thinks every, again, she just thinks she's the only person. She's the smartest person in the room. She thinks everything is supposed to come to her. All her needs should be met. And then here's poor George's family after all these years, still waiting for justice. I mean, I don't know like what kind of condition George's parents are. They looked kind of older to me in the interview. I have it on my playlist there, but you know, who knows what their health is like. Hopefully they'll be able to live to see justice for them because I tell you what, the more I see her, the more I don't like her. And that's just how it is. I mean, it's just, look at her, oof. All right, well, looks like I said, we'll be seeing a lot of her now. And I'll look out for that five page motion, I think she said, that she sent to the judge. And I will try to keep you up to date and keep you posted as much as I can. Because this is gonna be, I was gonna say a circus, but I think it's gonna be more like a shit show, honestly. I thought before I closed here that I'd go ahead and, you know, put up here, share with you Sarah's want ad because you all possibly, if you're an attorney or you know someone who's an attorney who would be looking for a prosperous challenge and would be ready for their close-up on national TV, zealous with a side of keen, our Opportunity awaits with Sarah Boone. I can't imagine anyone who would want to do it. They'd probably prefer to have a root canal than do it. And probably no amount of money is going to want anyone to want to do this. But anyhow, there it is. Take the number. Take the address if you know anybody who's interested. Well, needless to say, this is going to be a circus. And I guess that's a circus is a nice way of sugarcoating it for shit show because that's what it's really going to be. But we will try to, I will try to keep you all up to date as these things come, as these things come through. We'll look for her, her five page motion or whatever it is she sent to the judge. And we'll continue on this bizarre journey of Looney Boone Suitcase Sarah. As always, thank you all so much for subscribing, commenting, 
I love you all. I appreciate you all very much. Don't forget to go out and be kind to somebody. Be kind to you. And I'll see you the next time.